Let's take a look now at the student's t distribution. In the real world, it's not common for us to know the population standard deviation, or sigma. So we just spent some time talking about how do we find information um, when we know the population standard deviation, but most of the time that's just not going to be the case. So if we have a population that's not normally distributed and the sample size is too small, honestly, we don't know enough about statistics in this course to be able to find or estimate the population mean. However, if one of those two things is true, even if sigma is unknown, if either the population is normally distributed or the sample size is sufficiently large, we can use something called the student's t distribution, which is just another continuous probability distribution like the normal distribution. Now, the interesting thing about this is that it was um, the, a man named William Gossett actually discovered this. He worked at Guinness and he was responsible for sampling at Guinness and you know, looking at things like hops and all of the things that beer brewers would need to know. Well, he obviously wanted to use a small sample size. Um, and so he continued to study statistics and came up with this student's t distribution. Now you might be asking, why didn't they name it after Gossett? Well, Guinness was very strict about sharing of any kind of information with anybody. So even though this had nothing to do with brewing of beer and had more to do with statistics, they did not want him to publish. So he published with someone else and they called it the student's T because they called Gossett the student. So I digress. Let's talk about what a student's T distribution is. So essentially, if we think about the normal model, and again, I've already told you I suck at drawing the normal model, but you get the idea. If this is the normal model, the standard normal distribution, it's bell-shaped and centered at zero, then what's the difference? Well, a normal model is centered at zero with the standard deviation of one. The T distribution is a little bit fatter in the tails and a little bit not quite as tall. And so this has a fatter tail. So essentially the probabilities are a little bit different because there's more matter in the tail. And the only thing you need to know to know what the T distribution will look like is the degrees of freedom. So essentially for each degree of freedom, it's going to resemble more and more the normal distribution. So that red line is going to be more degrees of freedom than the green line. Now, if I have an infinite number of degrees of freedom, then it's going to be exactly the normal curve. So we're going to jump right into just finding the um, area or the probability to the left or right of a certain value using the t distribution as opposed to the normal distribution. So one thing that you need to keep in mind as you're working through the material in 8.2 and 8.3 is when you see something like t um, 0 0.095, the subscript always denotes the area to the right. So even though it says T.95, notice if I use Excel and I say T dot inverse of 0 0.95 comma 17, I'm not going to get the correct value. I'm getting a value on the right, which is positive. Now, what I want, I want you to notice what that value is. If instead I write t dot inverse of 0 0.05 comma 17, notice the value is negative. So now why does this make sense? Because just like a t score, if I have my t model, essentially what we're saying is the first one that I found was t of point, uh, 0 0.05 and that means that this area is 0 0.05 so it sort of works different than Excel in that Excel looks at the area to the left but this is looking at the area to the right so this guy is t of 0.95 because all of this would be 0.95 and so 
but we want to find essentially the T score, just like a Z score, but these are going to be opposite. So this is the negative 1.73961, and this is the positive 1.73961. So hopefully that makes sense, the difference between those two. Um, and the good news is I can always just use the 0 0.05 or I could here, I could have used the um, 0.95, but then put a negative in front and notice that I get the negative value. So whichever way that makes the most sense to you. Now, again, if we're looking for the value of a T distribution with 17 degrees of freedom, such that the area under the curve to the right of T is 0.1. So again, that's going to be denoted T sub 0.1. Um, but remember in Excel, we need the area to the left. So if there's 10% to the right, there's 90% to the left. So that's what I'm going to use is T dot inverse, and then the 90% to the left, and the degrees of freedom is 17. And that's going to give me my solution. Now I want to look at some two-tailed examples. So the ones we just looked at was area to the left or area to the right. Now I want to say, if I know the area in the two tails or the area between negative T and positive T. So this is the same exact thing we talked about with the normal model. If we have the area in both tails, total is a total of 0 0.02, then that means each tail is 0 0.01, because we would divide it by two, to see that this area is 0 0.01, and this area is 0 0.01, and that there's 98% in between. But in Excel, how would I find, say, this T value? Well, to find this T value, I would take T dot inverse, oops, T dot inverse of the area to the left of this. So if there's 0.1, or sorry, 0 0.01, 1% to the right, then there's 99% to the left, and then whatever my degrees of freedom are. Whereas this guy would be the opposite of that, which would be T dot inverse of 0 0.01, because that's the area to the left, and then of course the degrees of freedom. Same concept, if I, now I'm looking at the area between negative T and positive T is 90%. So again, looking at a similar picture, wish I could just clear all of that at once, but I don't know how to do that. So between these two is 90%. So the same thing that we talked about before, if it's 90% in the center, then one minus 0.9 gives me 0.1. So there's 0.1 total in the tails, and I still have to divide it by 2 to get 5%. So this is 0 0.05, and this is 0 0.05, but this value is 0 0.05 to the left, so it would be T dot inverse of that comma the degrees of freedom, whereas this, again, the area to the left is 0.05. 0 0.05 plus the 0 0.9, so all of that. So this would be T dot inverse of 0 0.95 comma degrees of freedom. So let's just look at a few of these questions together. Again, this is just going to help us find the critical value. In our next video, we'll actually find the intervals. Um, but this is a, a solid first step for us to get there. We want to find the critical value of T for a T distribution with 13 degrees of freedom such that the area in the tails is 0 0.05. So again, there's a couple of ways to do this, but I just want you to understand the idea that if there's 5% in the tails, that's half of it goes here and half of it goes here. So if the total in the tails is 5%, then there's 95% here. The area to the left of this is 0 0.975. So one way to do this is to say equals T dot inverse of 0 0.975. Oh, and then the degrees of freedom is 13, which is given. So that is the correct critical value which is just going to be the T um, of alpha over two.
Um, the other way that you can do it is you can actually say t dot inverse dot two t, which tells me it's two tailed. So notice there's the same amount in each tail. And then I can use the 0 0.05, which is the 5% that they gave me with 13 degrees of freedom. And notice I get the exact same solution. Either one is perfectly acceptable. So T inverse of the critical value plus half of alpha. I'm sorry, the <laughs> confidence level plus half of alpha. Or T inverse two-tailed of the alpha the part in the tails. The next one, the critical value of a t for a t distribution with 29 degrees of freedom, such that the area between negative t and positive t is 99%. So again, you're gonna get really good at this. Maybe you are already. If this part in the middle is 99%, there's 1% in each uh, total in the tails. So this is a half of a percent and this a uh, half of a percent. So I can either look at T inverse of the probability, which would be 0 0.995 comma 29 degrees of freedom, or I can say T inverse two tail, and then just give them the 0 0.01. So I would have to subtract 99% from 1 to get 0 0.01, and the degrees of freedom would be 29. So what would happen if instead I did T inverse 2 tail, sorry, 2 tail, and I did 0.99 instead of subtracting it from 1, comma 29? Not what you want to do. So remember, we're not looking for the probability in the middle, we're looking for the probability in the tails. Okay, last one, the critical T value for a 95% confidence interval using a T distribution with 24 degrees of freedom. So again, just as we did before, if there's 95 in the middle, then we've got 5% total on the outside, so this is 2.5%. And this is 2.5%. And it's going to be really similar to what I did up here. So remember up here, I did T inverse of 0.975. So I'm just going to change this to 24 degrees of freedom. Or T inverse two-tailed. If there's 95% in the interval, there's 5% left on the outside. And again, 24 degrees of freedom. So that would be my solution for the last one. Now that we know how to find those critical values, we are going to put it all together to create um, confidence intervals for estimating population means where we do not know sigma.